Thank you all for coming, and uh, obviously the room is too small for many of you to come in. And uh, Anna did a very good talk, and uh, my talk just tag on, give some flavor of what's happening in a developed country in terms of ROP management. Sir Han Wu, forward. How to move the slide forward? Oh, yeah. And we all know, you know, it's, I don't have to say, it's a major issue why we're sitting here every year, 30,000 baby aged blind from ROP alone. So it's an immense task. I think the number may increase because we now see more sick babies, small babies, in particular in middle-income countries. And um, just give a flavor, in New Zealand, of course, we are a very small country with only five and a half million populations. And, uh, we have on average six baby blind in the past, now actually probably one to two babies a year. But one to two babies sounds a very small number, but I think it's unnecessary. Still, it's probably too much. As Anna mentioned before, we had a calculation in New Zealand. For average life expenditure of 77 years, a baby from ROP or any medical issue blind cost the health dollars about approximately $4 million in the value of 2010. So this value probably underestimates because we have, in fact, in other costs related to the loss of productivity and the stress, emotional stress for the family, the care, so on and so forth. So we, fortunately, this disease we know very well. We have effective treatment. We have very robust evidence through various trials in the past and present. And we have the ability to treat disease if we pick them on in time. So the issue is that, as Anna mentioned before, is how we actually reach these kids. And if you look at the most recent study published from Mexico, uh, there are lots of uh, units actually have no program for ROP screening. And those units have ROP screening program actually not, <coughs> probably nearly half of the baby have been screened really. So we're not doing that great. And uh, this is a picture for the developing countries. In the developed countries like New Zealand, we have other issues. Yes, we have a universal screening program, but we do have the same issue, lack of personal involvement in the screening. And we have missed screening because baby transfer or baby be discharged to community, or we have a delayed diagnosis simply because we are not, not available. For example, I'm staying here talking to you, who do the screening back in New Zealand. So we have issue here. So lots of issues really in our uh, country is a missed uh, diagnosis or delayed diagnosis because the baby being transferred from one hospital to the other. So we actually did a systemic review for the two decades, look at all the babies blind from ROP in New Zealand. As you can see, the number of treatment actually jumped up quite, almost doubled actually over, over the two periods. And uh, however, the severe vision loss in ROP has reduced. We all know this because you now become clearer. We have gadgets to treat the baby. We perhaps treat it earlier. <coughs> but we still have issues. If you look here, the uh, looks, uh, picture looks great, but we almost still have the same number of patients that have not been treated. If you think, why, why is that? Even if until these last couple of years, we have almost 20% of babies not being treated. Those numbers are small in New Zealand terms, but we find out actually because those babies are the babies actually being misdiagnosed or was not diagnosed because they were actually missed in screening or actually because they were transferred from one unit to the other. The transfer unit forget us the receive unit for continue to provide service. The only time we find out the baby becomes stage 4B of 5, which give us a very bad result. We all know that. So if you look at the global picture, as I said, we have 30,000 babies a year blind from ROP. So many <coughs> poor with, uh, uh, in, in a lower birth weight uh, require screening. So this is a huge task. Uh, we, we do need to look at solutions, how we can actually do better. So in this sort of a background, we look at how we actually step up in New Zealand to actually minimize even one or two baby blind from this disease a year. So we look at a different uh, strategies, and uh, we, we really feel a guideline specific to our country, to each unit, uh, is the only way to go, because uh, we do uh, treat different babies, because they live in different countries, have different medical care. And we really need to be very specific, who does screening, who does treatment, 
And what happens if there be a transfer between units? And there need some actions and the responsibility to, to give to each individual who actually lead the program. And we sort of look at different options, including telemedicine, compare with indirect of samscope, go through trials, sort of compare the two modalities, so come with a solution. As I mentioned here, I want to get, draw your attention, you know, any service is good, can only be good if the service is available. You can talk indirect as a gold standard, but no, not many people can do indirect. And uh, Red Cam has to show, produce amazing images. I don't have to say, I don't believe I can have capture any image better with my indirect than this. Everybody can see it, not through the indirect, I'm the only person can see what I'm seeing. And uh, there's no doubt, and uh, with the new program, we need to have robust protocols. That's what we used, three images for posterior pole for each eye. And we, we compare with indirect, the accuracy is almost 100% to pick up before or treatment require RLP. So this telemedicine model is not new for us, it has done been done in Germany, USA, India, as Anna just showed, his brilliant work. And uh, uh, we also have the large network in Auckland called the Auckland Regional Telemedicine RLP Network, which has been going on for almost nine years. So the, the aim of the program is really to look for a sustainable screen service. The service can be provided continuously, even I'm here doing a talk, somebody else does the screening. And minimize this unnecessary transfer and minimize those may be missed. And uh, we have programs right start from the beginning, electronic capturing from the NICU, which baby need to be screened. Then involve the team go out to different NICUs and I just do the reporting. The reporting goes through back the hospital medical record system automatically with a report, which can be accessed by all physicians involved in a baby's care. So we share the burden and responsibility to, to all physicians, not only ophthalmologists, doing so actually minimize any chance we might miss the baby. So this has been going on for almost nine years, and we have done 1,800, nowhere compared to numbers Anna produced in India. And uh, we find the treatment required RLP barely 3% in New Zealand population. Many are insignificant type 2 RLPs. And doing so, we have not missed any babies. We are currently, one of my PhD students doing a large review, auditing our system for the last 10 years to make sure they are actually indeed produce what I'm claiming or we claim actually working system. And I think we are, the only, we are the only system, as Anna mentioned, that use red cam alone without indirect, provide diagnosis, treatment, decision making, and discharge the baby. I have not used indirect for RP screening for the last uh, six years. So if you look at this picture, and uh, I presented this in, in one of our college meetings recently, you can see the, the program what I show here. When you start using telemedicine, the number of RP baby actually blind in our country is dropped to zero. One of the units in the network joined later on in 2010, the use of five babies blind in the, in the past period, but once they joined, they become zero, whereas the rest of New Zealand, we still have babies actually missed blind uh, from RLP. So the good news, we're actually expanding southward, so all the major units in New Zealand now have a red cam. So hopefully we will link everybody up together in a not far future. So our experience showed improved accuracy in RLP diagnosis, and improve service delivery, and also improve the care. This is the fundamental issue when you ask the politicians, the management to give money to provide a service, you really need to show the difference your program make in terms of their health delivery. And uh, I think uh, telemedicine for RLP is very safe, effective. I think when you look at it with open mind, uh, really when you look for something, give us uh, easy access, provide accurate diagnosis, early detection, so we can treat the disease early. So the talk topic was actually said the New Zealand consensus statement for RP screening. This is our new guideline. I can't show it all because this is currently being published, so I can show you one of the uh, uh, a very small proportion. Well, this indoors, both BIO and the red cam are standard RP screening modality tools. In fact, we encourage Red cam to be used when available as a preferred choice for RP screening and documentation in New Zealand. So I think New Zealand is a small country. We, we make changes fast as we move fast. Although we are small, I think we actually have lots of uh, uh, experience in this area to share with you guys. And uh, uh, we'll be very happy to 
to help out. You, if you wanted to have a quick look at the document, it's also on a hospital website with uh, the new guideline. With this, I'd like to thank you all and remind you all this, this terrible stats here, we need to reduce the numbers. So really, we need to act now, not tomorrow or not later on. Thank you.